If you've been practicing medicine for any length of time, you've probably heard about tail insurance. It's expensive, it's a little confusing, and yet you know that it's a really important part of your malpractice protection. But what happens if something goes wrong and you don't secure your tail insurance in time? What if an employer forgets to buy it for you, or you accidentally let a policy lapse without buying it for yourself? Well, today we're going to dive into this topic and do a quick refresher on tail, explain why and how you should get it, and what happens if you don't. Stay tuned. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. All right, let's jump in. To kick things off, let's do a quick review and talk about what tail insurance is exactly. Well, tail insurance is an extension of coverage that is added to the end of your claims made insurance policy, offering you continued protection into the future. It is only required for policyholders that have claims made insurance. If you have occurrence coverage, tail is not needed. If you are simply switching from one claims made insurance policy to another, like if you're just switching insurance carriers, then you can continue your claims made coverage by carrying forward your prior acts to the new company. Tail insurance is generally not required if you're just moving to a new carrier. If, however, you are permanently canceling your coverage, either because you're leaving an employer, no longer practicing, or making a more significant change to your practice exposure, then you will need to secure tail in order to give you ongoing protection. Just a quick reminder, we do have several previous episodes on the differences between claims made and occurrence, so if you need a refresher on the various coverage options, I would suggest that you check out those episodes next. We'll link them for you here on the screen, and then we'll also drop them down in the show notes. Okay, so when a doctor buys a claims made malpractice policy, coverage is triggered based on when the claim is made against him. The doctor must carry the insurance while he's actively practicing, and then once he cancels, he must secure tail in order to have coverage for any claims that may be filed into the future for patients that he treated when he was previously insured. Sometimes tail insurance is also called an extended reporting endorsement, which is abbreviated as ERE, or it's called an extended reporting period, ERP but most people just refer to it as tail coverage. Your tail starts at your cancellation date, and then it extends your coverage into the future for any claims that may be made against you after you've canceled your insurance policy. Here's an example. So let's say that we have a doctor who starts her claims made policy on January 1st, 2020, and she renews the policy every year until she cancels on January 1st, 2030. At that time, she has to secure tail insurance. The tail insurance starts on the cancellation date and it extends her coverage into the future for any claims that may still be made against her for patients that she treated during the years when she was covered. In this example, that would be for any services that she rendered from January 1st, 2020 to January 1st, 2030. So if a patient files a malpractice claim against her on, let's say, June 5th, 2031 for a procedure that was done on December 10th, 2029, the tail insurance would activate and provide protection for that event since it was filed after the policy was canceled, but was for an event that occurred during the time when the policy was active. The tail insurance is really important because if you don't get it, it's as if you never had coverage before. Remember, coverage is triggered based on when the claim is made. So if you don't have insurance in place at the time that the claim is made, then you're not covered, even if you paid those premiums for all of those years before. It doesn't mean anything if you don't get that tail. 
So if we look back at that claim example, if our doctor did not secure tail insurance after her policy canceled on January 1st, 2030, and a claim is filed against her after this date, there would be no coverage. So as you can see, it's really important that tail is secured because if you don't have it, then there is no protection for future filed claims. Tail insurance is a one-time payment that must be purchased within 30 to 60 days of canceling your coverage. It generally costs one and a half to two times your annual premium. So if your premium was $15,000 a year, you could expect your tail to be around $30,000. Your tail policy will be quoted at the same limits as your claims made insurance policy, unless you request otherwise. You can request lower limits for your tail, but you cannot increase your limits for your tail. If your policy limits fluctuated during the lifetime of your claims made policy, generally the carrier will only let you obtain a tail policy at the highest limit that you carried within the last five years of your insurance. Most tail policies are unlimited, which means they don't have an end date. They cover you from the date of your cancellation indefinitely into the future. They even extend to cover your estate after you pass away if needed. Some carriers also offer limited tails, which give you a shorter period of protection. If, for example, you buy a two-year limited tail, then you would only be covered for claims that are filed within two years of your policy canceling. Any claims made after that two-year mark would not be covered. But before you opt for a limited tail, be sure you consider all of the risks, including exceptions to the statute of limitations rule that might present more problems for you down the road. Statute of limitation laws vary by state, and although these laws do set a time limit on a plaintiff's right to file a malpractice suit, it's not so simple. There are two common exceptions to the law that allow a patient to file a malpractice case beyond the standard window of time. First is the date of discovery. This exception allows the statute of limitations to be extended until the patient discovers that he or she was the victim of medical malpractice, or reasonably should have discovered the malpractice. This means that the statute of limitations clock doesn't start ticking until the discovery actually happens. The second exception has to do with the age of majority or issues involving minors. This exception allows for an extension of the statute of limitations until a minor child reaches the age of majority, which in most cases is age 18. In both of these instances, a two-year tail may not be sufficient time to protect you for any future filed claims. Okay, so now you have a good handle on the concept of tail insurance. You know how it works and why it's important, but you're still considering not buying it. So what now? Well, although we've already said that tail insurance is required, you can make the choice not to buy it. However, your malpractice insurance carrier has a legal obligation to offer it to you. If you choose to forego the tail insurance, you are essentially uninsured. So it's your choice. If you are uninsured or go bare, then you are personally responsible for any claims that are filed against you. Consider the fact that not only are you footing the bill for any potential losses, but you are also responsible for claim administration, which means hiring a third-party claim administrator or a defense attorney, paying the court fees, finding and hiring expert witnesses, and paying all of the related defense costs. For most providers, tail insurance offers peace of mind after a long, successful career in medicine. It would be unfortunate to take a financial or reputational hit that could have otherwise been prevented. One other consideration, if you choose not to buy your tail, it may cause issues for you when you try to secure new malpractice insurance in the future. Malpractice insurance applications will ask about your prior coverage, and they will want to know why you chose not to buy your tail. Sometimes this leads to you getting declined for coverage. But what if you intended to buy your tail, but you forgot? Or you thought your employer was going to buy it for you and they didn't? What then? Well, if you miss out on your opportunity to buy your tail, talk to your agent about your options. 
the first and best course of action is to go back to your insurance company and ask for the tail offer to be reissued. If there was some unforeseen circumstance or some mistake made, it is possible for the insurance carrier to give you another opportunity to buy your tail, but there's no guarantee. If it's only been a few weeks or a month or so since the tail offer expired, chances are they will give you another quote. But if it's been several months, it may be more difficult. We've seen carriers requote within two or three months, but just the other day I had a doctor whose policy had been canceled for six months and the carrier would not give them another chance to buy it. It may be possible to get coverage from the secondary market if your primary insurance carrier is not willing to rebill you for your tail. But understand that coverage will likely be limited and the price will probably be much higher if it's available at all. When the time comes for you to cancel your insurance policy, be sure to work closely with your agent so that you can review all of your tail options and make a well-informed, timely decision so that you can move forward with confidence in the years ahead. And to make things a little easier for you, we've put together a cheat sheet with a free summary of this information, along with answers to many frequently asked questions on tail coverage. Please check out the show notes with the link to download. I think you'll find it helpful. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us via phone, email, or chat today. And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. And please don't forget that our mailbag link is now live on our website. So if you have a question that you'd like me to answer here on the podcast, check out the link below where you can drop us a line and ask your question or schedule a quick 10 minute phone call for a personal consultation to discuss your unique insurance needs. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.